Welcome back to Falcons Franchise. It is the division round of the playoffs, as today we're going to take on the Dallas Cowboys. They went 14-3, and but as you'll see on the screen, they have the same overall team that we have. Now, I will admit the Cowboys are a more talented team. I talked about it in the last episode. I don't really know how we have an 85 overall team. I guess it's really just being carried by the top of the squad here, and we are still very lacking in terms of depth. But the Cowboys, we see quite a number of 90 plus overall studs. Their offense should be incredible. They have playmakers on defense like Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Stefan Gilmore, Trayvon Diggs to help make it a real problem for us today. Malik Hooker is even upgraded as is Leighton Vander Esch. This is a really, really talented team and it should be what I expect a struggle to win this game. If we were unfortunately the losers of this game, the off-season stream will be on Twitch. I'll tweet out on Twitter whenever that stream is going to be. The links, as always, are down in the top of the description. Twitch and Twitter, that's kind of all you need. Now, I've been cutting these drills out more and more as you guys have seen them more and more, but it is so much fun to do this trench battle drill with Kyrie Yankee. He's just a bull-rushing, powerful interior defensive lineman, and it's just awesome to just annihilate these offensive linemen and get to the quarterback. Kyrie Yankee's been a really nice surprise for us this year. I really wouldn't have expected him to get all the way up to superstar development, but here he is, 80 plus overall as a rookie, and uh, he continues to play very well. Here we go with the divisional round of the NFL playoffs of the NFC. Falcons, Cowboys, winner goes to the AFC championship game. It should be a good one. We have to go on the road to AT&T in Arlington, Texas and see if we can knock off the ever-tough-to-defeat Dallas Cowboys. It is Trey Lance, who's a Cowboy in real life, against Dak Prescott, who is also a Cowboy in real life, but also here in the game. Should be a very interesting matchup. Dak Prescott versus Trey Lance. The Cowboys versus the Falcons. Two 85 overall teams will duel today with one goal in mind. Keep your playoff and Super Bowl dreams alive. And here we go. We are underway in Texas as we will try to pull off what should be an upset. We snuck into the playoffs as Young Wei Koo is nearly able to make the tackle. George Elliott, the UDFA, ends up cleaning up as Dak Prescott will take the field. You know, it, it's been nice to not just have the typical, okay, franchise series. We take the worst team. We're awful in the first year. Getting a little bit better in the second year. We've been a playoff team both seasons of Falcons franchise, but I still feel like we've had the ups and downs, but just a little bit more typical or typical of a real NFL team that you'd see in real life. So it's been interesting, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong with the other way either, right? Like if you guys watch Riverside, everyone was begging me to bring back my NCAA college football revamped Riverside Royals Dynasty custom team builder team. And that's exactly what I did. Some of you may have missed it. It was one of the more recent updates or uploads on my channel. I also came out with an episode two. So if you like seeing me get mad and get dominated with a really, really bad team and then, you know, build it into what should be a powerhouse over time, that's exactly what that series is. It's kind of like Falcons franchise in a way. We're playing every game, but there's recruiting. It's a ton of fun. So I recommend checking out the Riverside Royals Dynasty. Give it a chance. Uh, some think it's the best series I've ever uploaded on my channel, and you might enjoy it as well if you haven't seen it. So give it a shot as we start from scratch, essentially, after the death penalty. I'm not going to spoil too much about that series, but you can check out the comeback episode. You can't miss it on the channel and the playlist, but that is not the focus here as we are trying to stop this Cowboys offense that is just continuing to pick up yard after yard after yard and breaking a ton of tackles. We have not really been any good at all to start this drive i mean it is just chunk play after chunk play and even when we seem to be in position to get stops the cowboys are just breaking tackles and that's the kind of the first time we've really been able to do anything against them as troy anderson shuts down tony pollard it's only a gain of one do we try to blitz Dak more how do we slow the cowboys down we're going to show pressure in the a gaps and we're going to send it as well See if Dak can take advantage of it. We're not getting any pressure until finally Dak just holds onto the football and Arnold Ebikady comes free off the edge. We sent so much heat there 
I have no idea how none of it registered for so long. Did they really max protect? I need to see it on the replay. It's tough to diagnose in real time. So they have a tight end and they have the running back. Schultz goes out. Pollard stays in. And nobody is capable of winning a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, Kyrie Yankee kind of does after a little while. Gets off the left guard. Which is, is that AJ Khan? Interesting. Well, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know if he plays in real life anymore. I don't think he does. Um, he was, I think, last on the Texans, right? So Kyrie Yankee sheds that block and takes over on Tyron Smith, leaving Arnold Ebikati to come free. And that's kind of that, you know, argument I constantly make is you have to actually watch. It's not just who gets the sack because Kyrie Yankee made that play happen as that is wide open. Ebikati was in coverage against Jake Ferguson. And Ferguson has the touchdown. Did I say Dalton Schultz earlier? I hope I didn't. But yes, Jake Ferguson finds the end zone. He's acting like he's been there before. He seems unfazed. I don't know if you guys are WWE guys. I used to be back when I was, uh, I don't know, in the, in the mid-2000s, maybe into the 2010s. And Festus, from Jesse and Festus, was this WWE wrestler who uh, his whole gimmick was that he was this big, dumb idiot. But then when the bell rung... He went and was an animal, and he was unstoppable, and he was just kind of sitting there with his tongue hanging out almost, and he just was completely unaware of anything going around around him. And uh, that's what Jake Ferguson looked like in the end zone, is my point. I don't know. Uh, not a great start. Our offense is going to have to do a lot to compete today. And there is Trey Lance. He had a good season, remember, only starting about half of our games. Desmond Ritter has played, and he even played in week 18 after we sat Trey Lance down. Uh, but Trey Lance had an awesome wild card game. He is our quarterback, and we trust him as he's going to find Kyle Pitts over the middle, and he finds the middle of the star. Dance on the star, Kyle! Set the tone! He's not going to do it. Who are some guys that have done that? Terrell Owens did it, right, when he was a, I think he was a niner. Did he have been an Eagle then? I think he was. He did it when he was a 49er early in his career. And then there was another guy who did it. I want to say more recently. I cannot remember. I can't remember. Ah, shoot. Anyway, Kyle Pitts doesn't want to join the elite club. And we might send it to Kyle Pitts down the field. We're taking a shot! And Lance overthrows him. That would have been six. Kevin Byard is the most recent one that I was thinking of. But according to a, a website, uh, Brandon Jacobs has also done something somewhat similar, standing on a star on the helmet in the end zone. Ciara, Russell Wilson's wife? How is she making this list? She moonwalked on the uh, star on the helmet? All right. Either way, Kyle Pitts didn't have that dog in him. As we're going to try to get it to Neil Madsen, and the rookie who's played so well lately is not able to make a tough catch there. You really have to be able to. I mean, we've seen a guy like Jason Witten with the Cowboys make that catch a hundred times. And we get all the way to midfield on one play, and then it's back-to-back -back incomplete passes. And are we really going to run the ball on, on third and ten? No, that's just kind of giving up. But I would say this is four-down territory if we can get, like, six or seven yards here. And that's kind of what I'm going to go for. But we're going to throw it to Madsen. Go up and get it. And he does, but he can't complete the catch. Leighton Van Der Esch is the best coverage player of all time. Now for midfield, I feel like we have no choice but to punt. I thought we had a decent matchup. You just got to be able to go up and catch that. Pitts, kind of an equally good matchup, maybe even better. It's just mismatched the height versus the DB versus the tight end and the linebacker. I don't know. Probably just need to go to Kyle Pitts there. Give him a chance. But he just dropped the ball too. But so did Madsen. Ah! Probably got to go to your best player. And that is Kyle Pitts. That's the only thing I would change about that. But you got to take a shot in that spot, clearly. And it's not a great punt. I don't know how that's on the 21. He caught it clearly on the 20. But all right. And it is my fault with the play calling. We need to run the ball on first and 10 from the 50. Have to run the ball there. Oh, that's good defense, but the catch is made by Brandon Cooks. It's a great throw. It's a decent enough route, but we have defenders all around. We can't let Brandon Cooks complete that catch. There's just no way. He takes it from Richie Grant, 
takes a hit from Terrell, maybe even uh, Deshaun Humphreys coming in there at the end, D. Hump. No one could stop Brandon Cooks from catching that pass. Here's first and 10 from the 45. Dallas is driving and running the ball. Cut back from Pollard. We are all over it. Not much. Second and seven. This looks like a run to the outside. Anderson's there again, and down goes Pollard for a loss. That's what we need to do. Stop the Cowboys from running the ball. Now, the problem that you run into is that they also can throw the ball really well. I don't really like how no one's even close to C.D. Lamb. They're kind of dialing up a screen, and it's not going to be successful. We're all over it. Weird play call. So weird. They're going to end up punting, so punting, I guess, for us was the right move. But I really wish we didn't even have to. Kind of needed to just run the ball on first down and just see what Bijan can do. And Patterson back to return. Uh, we've played around with Mike Hughes there. He just really wasn't able to do much. I know last year he did, but I don't know. It, returning is such a weird thing where you might have 10 that do nothing and then one that goes for a ton and then 15 or 20 more with nothing. Rodero Patterson's able to do something. He just doesn't have the long speed to turn it into much. And he's been fumbling lately, which is obviously not what we want as Bijan's only able to get a couple to start on his first touch. Mozzie Smith trying to stun on Bijan. Know your place, Mozzie. Second and eight. Check down to Bijan. Make somebody miss in space, and he does. And another. Bijan's still going. Finally knocked out at the 35, but that's what we need to do. Get the ball into the hands of arguably your best playmaker, and that is the now 99 overall Bijan Robinson. Safety coming up. Perfect time to take a shot off play action. Rashid Shahid down the field. I just do not think they're going to be able to keep up with him. Plain and simple. Need blocks to hold up for a little bit. I see Kyle Pitts open. I totally saw it. I like Rashid Shahid more. He had a step, and again, Lance can't hit him. We're just precision passing a little bit too far. It's better to have an overthrow in that spot than an underthrow, obviously. Kyle Pitts was open. We got greedy. We wanted more, and it didn't work out. Now we're going to give it to Kyle Pitts, and essentially what he would have done in the play before if we had thrown it to him. But there is a flag, and of course, we can't have nice things. Oh, you got a hold? Coming back. Second and 20. And now... Uh, now that deep miss is going to loom large. Because that play maybe didn't even ever even have to happen. We would have had a touchdown. Check down. It's just a weak, weak call. We get two. What's the point? It's third and 18. End of the first quarter. Uh, we got we to gotta get some more balls. I'm sorry to the female viewers watching this to discriminate or whatever. And I, let's be honest. There aren't any. There aren't any watching this. Maybe my mom's tuning in. Hi, mom. Appreciate the view. It's third and 18. Ah, oh, jeez. There's Trey Lance. Check down to Bijan, but it's a screen, so that's the call. We get some of it back. Better punting position. Wow. Ah, I, I hate it. It's disgusting. It's disgusting to do it, but we need better position on the field. And... Our defense got to stop last time. Maybe they can do it again. Hold the ball for longer. We got roughing the kicker. Muff to punt. Oh my goodness, what's happening? Dallas recovers. Chaos ensues. It might not even matter. Yeah, hold on to it for longer. As long as it doesn't get blocked, I'll take roughing the kicker. We're going to have first and 10 on the 47. As opposed to Cowboys football, we catch a break. And this is the spot I was talking about earlier where we needed to start by running the football. It's essentially four down territory location on the field. And it might not even matter if we can get the first down, but second and six is a great start. Just run the ball, run the ball, and run the ball some more. We have to neutralize the pass rush of Micah Parsons. Jake Matthews has done a decent job overall. And there's Bijan with blocks on the outside from Shahid. Hooker tackles him from behind, but it's another nice play for Bijan Robinson. And we are now to the 25, into the green zone. Next stop, hopefully the red zone. Got a few more yards to go. And we're going to throw it to Drake London. He makes the catch. We'll take another second and six. It's a good spot to be in. And I think we're going to try to run the ball here. Read option could be sneaky. We're reading Demarcus Lawrence as opposed to a really athletic player, Micah Parsons. Not to say that Lawrence isn't athletic. Just, I like our chances a bit more, you know? 
and it works out. We play the read to the running back. Bijan takes it up the middle, and we are officially into the red zone. On the 15, Kyle Pitts into block. That's classic Falcons offense. Check down to Algier, but it works to perfection as we get six yards instead of our usual four. But there is an injury. Algier, I don't know, flailing like a fish out of water. He's limping off the field onto the bench. Be nice if someone would check on him. Can we get a, a doctor over there? A trainer? Something? Get a free timeout to collect ourselves. Second and six, or second and four, six minutes to play here in the second quarter. Hand off to Bijan, cut back inside, and we'll take that. Maybe had more to the outside, but we had guaranteed yardage. We stayed up the middle. That's just a foot spray for Algier. He's going to take a little bit of a breather. And now it's third and one. Obvious run spot. That's exactly what we're going to do. It's got to be Bijan Robinson. Up the middle, finds enough space. It's another first down. And we're just, you know, taking, you know, a short yardage gain after short yardage gain, and it's working out. We're not getting huge chunk plays, but it doesn't really seem to matter. Shot off play action, not really even a shot. Throw it to the end zone. London! Inaccurate on the run. Probably just had a touchdown if we scrambled in. Now, Bijan is uncovered on the left side. There is nobody on him, and there stays nobody on him. What's happening? Lance misses another throw. They said that's good accuracy. It's not. Hey, I mean, it's not even close. Bijan essentially is running a streak here, but he, I don't know. It's, the pass is not even close. It's like Lance threw it to the pylon. And now London's covered. Third and goal, running a mesh concept. What happens if we put Bijan out here? Nobody's on him. Snap the ball and throw it to him. Should be a touchdown. There it is. Bijan open. Got the feed in. They have no interest in covering him on the outside. Motion him over. Nobody moves. Kind of made me worried that it was going to be zone coverage and then that outside corner was going to go in and cover him. Uh, but that's not what happened. Nobody went over. Bijan into the end zone. Two feet in. Not going to review it. And we are finally on the board. 7-7. It's been a weird game, but our defense has stepped up. And now our offense has with a long drive. We had great field position. So, after the penalty, I'll, I'll take it any way we can get it. Any way we can keep a drive alive and make plays happen, that's unfortunate for me. John Graves, I just over-pursued. And that's going to be a touchdown. Okay. Um... This is going to sound obvious, but I wish that didn't happen. Yeah, that's, uh... Sometimes you're sprinting down there, you think somebody else is going to make a play, and they don't. And it's got to be you who has to make the play, but you already counted on somebody else making the play. And we're down by a touchdown. But Rashid Shahid can answer. Let's go, Shahid. All right, not the same. Oh, and Dallas full momentum after that. Great. Now we're going to have to try and take some of that back. There's Bijan up the middle. He gets four. I'm very comfortable with that happening every first down. If we can run the ball for four yards every first down, that's a dream in the NFL. It is an actual dream. I'll take second and six every time. And then that sets up Bijan. He gets to the outside, but he can't do anything with it. Kind of got caught up on a block, and it's third and four. What are Dallas's ability here? Home team has a greatly reduced fumble chance. They can hot route faster. None of that really seems to matter. And the punt distance is shorted, kicking across the 50. Okay, well, that's a problem. I'm snapping the ball. I'm literally hitting A. Why is it being delayed? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on me. I'll take responsibility for clicking a button that's supposed to do something. Third and nine. Madsen can't be on that route. Is that going to work? No, it's not. We'll drag him. We'll see what happens here. Somebody's got to get open. That's open enough. Kyle Pitts cannot catch it. I mean, the delay of game screwed us in that spot. There's absolutely no way around it. Because third and short enough, I feel like we could have converted. 
Not a guarantee, obviously. It was, what, third and four? A halfback dive may not have done it. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. Feels like it would have been a pretty good chance. Now, if we had fourth and one, we obviously would have had to punt from that spot anyway. But I think the run is the right call in that spot. Maybe you disagree. I, I could I could see why. Terrell, good defense. Am I being too conservative? We've taken a couple deep shots in this game. They just haven't worked. And that's just not the angle. I thought he was going to go back inside. We gave him the sideline. And he took it. It's a big third down and 10. We are under two minutes to play here in the first half. We've played pretty well. Just have to keep it up. We're going to go over the middle, and they lobbed it. That's so perfectly annoying. I mean, what can you do there? You're playing underneath, trying to cut those routes off, play for the interception, and he just takes it up the field uh, on a nice lob. Just great, great, great execution there from the Cowboys. Let's get a little bit cr uh, closer to Luke Schoonmaker here. It's second and one. They're really letting the clock go down. They go to the outside. Richie Grant takes out the legs of Schoonmaker. That's fine. A first down, I don't really care about in that spot. Just don't want, uh, want to allow the touchdown. Here's first and goal. Throw to the flat, and it's dropped. They have an offensive lineman out trying to catch the football. Probably not the time to test something like that out. As we're going to play underneath, I guess. Playing the sticks here, I've learned, is stupid, which doesn't make any sense. Because uh, there's no actual reason. People just say, oh, you shouldn't do that there. Th that's the end zone. That's what I'm trying to defend against. Anyway, that's exactly where it's completed. Literally right on the goal line. Brandon Cook's wide open. It's frustrating. Looks like he got both feet in. And it's going to be 21-7 to Dallas. They are reviewing this, I believe. But it looked pretty clear cut to me. Maybe his left heel was out but it really doesn't look like it based on the angle we saw first i would say this is probably going to stand obviously in the game it's a lot different from real life but yes it does stand we'll have 30 seconds and three timeouts to try to get into field goal range young way ku can hit from deep that's not really an issue we just have to get close enough to make it happen time is going to be a factor but we can stop the clock it's just going to be about executing in a timely manner. We can't really run the ball here. We can check down. But we need a couple of chunk plays. Back-to-back, -back, like, 15-yard plays would be pretty nice. That would put us in a really good spot to do it. We can throw over the middle. That's not an issue. But again, we just have to actually convert. And Lance is nearly sacked. Maybe a screen on second and ten. Yeah, this actually should work pretty well. We need a couple of blocks, and we got him. Bijan back to the inside, makes a couple miss. There goes Robinson timeout. We didn't need to step out of bounds. We have three timeouts. Look at Bijan Robinson making a play. That is absolutely massive. Basically getting us into field goal range on that one play alone. Not quite. It's still a long one. But that's a really big time play. 16 seconds. Madsen's open. Oh my goodness. I thought that was going to be like the classic. We overshoot an open player and it's intercepted going the other way. Thankfully, that was not the case. My life flashed before my eyes. And we could actually run the ball here unless we're playing for a touchdown, which you might want to consider down at this point in the game. But we need points. That's not what I wanted to do. Where, where is that going? So we were reading the mesh here which was effectively Madsen in London. Uh, Madsen was working open, but I really didn't want to throw him the ball. I wanted to throw the ball to Drake London, and I just hit A instead of, I think, B. Uh, but then the pass was not where it needed to be. So we dodged a bullet there, and it would just be very tough to score a touchdown in this spot. I don't really even know that we're going to try. Eight seconds. We're going to throw it up to Madsen. He actually makes the catch. He goes down. We call our final timeout. See, that's why you give him a shot sometimes. He's able to make those catches, and that's a tough one. But yeah, I think we are going to just take the points. Should be an easy chip shot field goal. There is wind somehow. But the kick is up and good right down the middle. I think we ended the first half fairly strong considering how some of that went.
obviously need to try and eliminate some of these mistakes we're making even on special teams but could have been worse could have been worse i want to run the ball we can't be afraid to do that in the second half but we also have to recognize that we are down in this game so it's going to be important to be quick but not like one dimensional and we'll get the football to start the third quarter it's a great time to remind you guys to check out the riverside series on the channel i think you're really going to enjoy it uh, i think it's it, it's some of the most work i've put into a video intro in a long time it took me about three months to put everything together with you know getting the collab videos that feature in that and um setting up the background and the dynasty and getting into the future and setting up everything that i wanted so check it out i really do think you're going to enjoy it but here is the third quarter back on falcons franchise safety came up to take away the slant and we just keep dropping back and back and back and back and back we lose 10 ah need to get it back this can't be a three and out we need to make a play there's london i was hoping that Bijan might block london ends up getting 10 of it back going to be third and 10 from the 25 red zone up could be good i actually don't like running this in the red zone very much what could we do here shahid could be an option i think Bijan robinson could be an option as well but the read is kyle pitts and we're sacked micah parsons just wins instantly there's not really much we can do when we're waiting on something to develop over the middle and micah just has a free release to just completely dominate caleb mcgarry and now it is a three and out and we have to punt but we don't really have a choice that's a really frustrating start to this second half. We got the football. We got points to end the second half, or the first half, the second quarter. We were in a decent enough spot, and we did nothing with it. Defense is going to have to make some big-time plays. Oh, it's play action. It's good defense. We honestly got to Dak Prescott a little late there. I wonder what this looks like on replay. Caden Ellis just kind of stopped there for some reason. Like... Do you see this when I'm usering him and I'm holding down the entire time towards Prescott and he just goes, whoa, like run at the quarterback. So we do. We take a few extra steps. We're lucky it didn't get called. I think is what I'll say about that. We are lucky it didn't get called. Second and 10, man coverage across the board, daring Dak Prescott to make a throw. The ball's going to have to come out quickly. And it does. It's Luke Schoonmaker, and it's another first down for Dallas. It's a run. It is a run, and we don't take the right angle. Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell can't make the tackle, and Tony Pollard brings it down inside the 20, inside the 15, and that is a big-time play. Man coverage has not been great against Dallas, but zone has been picked apart also. So a bit of a tough spot for us, as there is good enough defense. We really need a turnover. Allowing a field goal, not the worst thing. Really cannot afford to allow a touchdown here. 24 to 10, two possession game. Very different from the 28 to 10, three possession game. We are looking to avoid that at all costs. There's Cade Nellis right in the lane to take out Pollard. Had a little bit of help as well. It's third and eight. This is a very obvious pat, uh, pass commit spot. We have to play the pass. I'm trusting my guys in man coverage. Just don't screw up, and they screwed up almost instantly upon saying that. Pass commit. We know it's a pass. Deshaun Humphreys just cannot cover a tight end. Second on the depth chart in Luke Schoonmaker. Oh, it's frustrating. It's going to be 28-10. I maybe don't run man in that spot, but I thought with the pass commit, they would have a pretty good idea. I don't know. Have some help. It didn't work. Whatever the goal was, the idea, it didn't end up working. I just don't know how Luke Schoonmaker is the one to completely dominate Deshaun Humphreys. I mean, he got open so quickly. On the run, Kyle Pitts! There he is! Get Trey Lance on the move. He actually delivers an accurate pass. He struggled today. There's no way around it. Uh, it's been me, though, with the precision pass leads down the field, trying to go for the big play, trying to go for these touchdowns, and it just hasn't happened. I feel like it's the right idea. It just hasn't worked out. And we haven't really used the mobility of Trey Lance at all in this one. That was only his first attempt. Goes for eight. And we do need to qu uh, be quick about it. I could I could get down with a screen here. As long as Demarcus Lawrence doesn't drop back into coverage, which he doesn't. We got a block. There goes Drake London. That's a nice play. 
down at the 15. Let's go ahead and work same formation. Not a screen this time. And a quick throw to the inside. Ooh, that's tight coverage. Stefan Gilmore right there. Second and 10. The blocking's just usually good when Cordero Patterson comes in the game. And there he goes. Touchdown, CDP. You know what? He's made some mistakes lately. But we can still count on him when we need him. It's the stanky leg. <laughs> Unreal. All right. We are going to be down by 11. We'll probably have to go for two at some point. Could have done it there. Doesn't necessarily have to happen. Um, but I'm thinking the, the reason I say go for two is because we could actually put ourselves in a position to win the game. Um, if we score a couple of touchdowns and we, you know, they could answer with a field goal, right? Or, right, if we score, let's say, a touchdown, that would make it 24 to 28. But with a two-point conversion, we'd only be down by a field goal. So, I think either way, going for two makes a lot of sense. Even if we don't happen to get a touchdown on our uh, on our next possession. So, I, I think... I think it's going to be imperative to get points of any kind, but if it's a touchdown, I think the two-point conversion would be in our best interest for sure. Second and nine. Play action. Get to Dak! Troy Anderson's there. Emma Katie finishes. Both getting half a sack. It's third and 15. Finally, pressure arrives. Get back. Get back. Oh, I, they're not getting back. They're not listening to me. I just don't want that to happen. Michael Gallup with a catch, couple of broken tackles. We, have, we get third and long, I pass commit again. I don't get how this is beating us. It's because Hughes helps on the inside with the zone. We have Richie Grant as single high. He rotates over, but there's just no chance. There's no chance. I mean, what it really should be, and I might need to just make these guys match coverage instead of just playing their zone responsibility, because then probably Mike Hughes runs with Michael Gallup, right? And we helped inside to Schoonmaker, so it's really just Mike Hughes who needs to match on that. But uh, I've got to change that in coach suggestions and do that on the next play, because I think we had the correct defense called there. It just obviously did not work out well at all. At all. At all. Run up the middle, Pollard swallowed up. Zach Harrison injured on the play. But you know what? He did a job. Third and eight. Match responsibility here. I'm going to use her DJ Humphreys and help to the inside. And they go to the outside. Schoonmaker. This guy is our kryptonite. Luke Schoonmaker is just dominating. He's got six catches for 52 yards and a touchdown. We can't stop Luke Schoonmaker. That's going to be what keeps us out of the playoffs and knocks us out, I should say. Luke Schoonmaker. Fun fact about Luke Schoonmaker. He was the backup quarterback to Will Levis in high school. Ended up transferring to Michigan, or going to Michigan and uh, playing tight end after uh, that shift. I can't even get the sentence out. Michael Gallup, touchdown. I'm about to, I'm about to lose my mind. That is the end of the third quarter, but basically my story is that Luke Schoonmaker was the, the, basically the backup quarterback to Will Levis in high school, transferred high schools, played like quarterback tight end, and then committed to Michigan. Um, that's pretty much how I remember things from what I read, but I uh, couldn't get that out because I'm too worried about uh, losing the game. As Rashid Shaheed makes the catch, but we... See, like, a thing they talked about... In Madden 24 is that receivers would just carry momentum on run after catch plays and Rashid Shaheed's open like pretty easily catches the ball and just slows down enough that Trayvon Diggs can push him in the back why is he losing momentum so that that can happen it's frustrating it's the fourth quarter like this is it guys our season's on the line we're down 35 17 our defense obviously didn't come to play our offense could have done better. But we scored 17 points in three quarters. It's really not that bad. It's not great. But it's not that bad. Our defense just crushed us. And uh, our offense has not done enough to help out in that regard. 
We uh, are trying to get back in this game, but we we got to do it now because it's now or never. Madsen open. There's some run after catch from Madsen. Takes a hit, gets knocked out of bounds at the 22. Removing the football, we're taking some momentum back, but that clock's not going to stop. I like slants here, and I like Patterson if they're in man coverage. Oh, over the middle. Pitch! We hit him in stride! Let's go! Down at the three. Go hurry up. Is Algier in the game? No, it's Patterson. Shoot. Might try slants again. That's right. Uh, we maybe had it if we, if we let go of it. Lance up the field. Finds the end zone for the score. Okay, Trey. We are not out of it yet. We're going to go for two here because we know we're probably going to have to at some point in real life anyway or at some point for the rest of this game. Bijan should be healthy or, or not tired is what I mean by that. So let's go and try inside zone. They're so spread out. If my offensive line gives up ground here, I'm going to be furious. There's Bijan. Finds enough space and it's a 10-point game. 35-25, seven minutes to play. We have three timeouts. End the two-minute warning. But we have to focus on getting a stop. Don't want to use any timeouts on this possession by Dallas. Ideally, we would get a three and out now. But it doesn't always happen like that. Great coverage by George Elliott. Can be a successful run here. Pollard not really slowed up. And that hit stick, he just doesn't even take it at all. Defies gravity to not get hit there. Or physics. Dallas already has the ball 39, man. Ugh, it's tough. Should be a false start at least. They'll back up slightly and maybe out of field goal range even. We need to put pressure on them. But I don't. I think they're just going to run the football. It's going to be tough to put pressure on them if they're just going to run. To run to the outside. You got to make a tackle. Richie Grant. Oh my goodness, what a play. Nice open field tackle. It's second and 16. I think they're still going to run based on what they're, they're coming out in. Jumbo set. They're... Second tight end is an offensive lineman. And they end up passing the ball and throwing it to Caden Ellis. Dak in clutch throws a pick. How am I even surprised? User pick. Easy reads. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And Dak with a clutch time interception. What's new? Not that. Throw it away. Okay, that's intentional grounding, but it's not. Don't worry about it. I mean, we're suddenly back in this game. We have to take advantage. There's Bijan. Madsen, why are you giving up on the play? Oh my goodness, the entire in my head design was that Neil Madsen was gonna work as a lead blocker and he just kind of runs around and goes, ah, I'm just gonna, just gonna go to the sideline. Dude, turn up the field and block. He's, he's looking at the quarterback. You can see the balls away. Be a lead blocker. It's third and four, four and a half minutes. We honestly could just run the ball here. But we're going to try to not do that and throw to Kyle Pitts, who cannot catch it. I saw Algier on the wheel. I like just the guaranteed yardage a bit more from Pitts, but of course he doesn't catch it. A wheel, of course, not actually open. Uh, Madsen on the other side of the field ends up being more open, but with Micah Parsons in your face, you just got to make a decision. And throwing it to Pitts, like we talked about earlier, like that has to be the guy. And he is unable to come up with the football. And it's fourth down and four. Somebody's got to make a play. Madsen. Make a play. Sideline. Great ball from Lance. And we connect deep down the field on fourth and four. Oh my goodness. What a ball from Lance. But what a route from Neil Madsen. Just over three and a half minutes to play. Kyle Pitts to the end zone. Go up and get it and he makes the catch, Kyle Pitts. I fucking called a timeout. God, what? I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Damn it, okay. Um, if we're gonna make it a field goal game, I just wasted a timeout. If that comes back to, to bite us, I'm going to be absolutely devastated. I Okay. We're down by a field goal. We fought back in this game. We're in it now. 
We are in it now. Hopefully we don't need that last time out. We have the two minute warning. It's going to have to be enough. A three and out here would be excellent. But it's been tough to do that the entire game as Ogundeji really helps us out there. Ade Ogundeji. If he didn't make that tackle, I don't know who was going to. Are they going to try to run the ball, take time off the clock? There's a lot of time left. You need a first down or two. They're actually going to pass the ball. Dak under pressure. Bates! Good coverage on an offensive lineman. I'm assuming wearing number 61. Second and 10. Opting not to use a timeout. Bring our defenders up. I am going to pass commit here. And it is a pass. And it's just wide open. <laughs> Michael Gallup broken tackle. Deshaun Humphreys trying to save the game for us, and he can't do it. Uh, these receivers are just creating so much space. They're creating so much separation. We're in zone coverage, but, I mean, man doesn't work either. And we can't tackle in the open field half the time. And they make it a 10-point game again. And now that timeout's going to loom large. That's going to be a really huge timeout, unless we manage to score in, like, 50 seconds. I mean, we've made it a game. I'm happy about that, but I want to do more than just have it be a game. I want to win the game. Kyle Pitts is actually in the zone, you know. This could be big. This could be big, but we're not going to throw it to him when Drake London's wide open over the middle. We're going to run hurry up here. It's going to take some time off the clock. I need to isolate Kyle Pitts. We need him open in a one-on-one -on -one spot. We're going to run. Parsons in pursuit. We're just going to take off and uh, get out of bounds. Big play. Now, Pitts gets out of the zone if he's not targeted within the next two throws. So it might just be a good idea to throw it to him here. And now he's out of the zone for real. And Trey Lance is hurt. Oh, my God. And he's doing like calisthenics on the sideline. What is? What are they testing for? His his arm strength. Did he like tear his pec? Desmond Ritter into the game. We have no idea what the Trey Lance injury is going to be. It's a shoulder injury. So yeah, they are testing like pec or shoulder. Um, maybe a collarbone injury. That's not good. Our starting quarterback who's played so well in the second half of the season is out. Desmond Ritter, who was benched and injured, is now our only hope. We need a big play. And I'm just gonna check down. Second and 10, Shahid will probably bring us down to the two minute warning. Might be able to get one more snap off. Snap the ball, I'm spamming A. Who wants to get open? Bijan, nope. Not even who I wanted to go to. And do we send Trey Lance back out there on fourth and three? Or keep Desmond Ritter? I'm going with Trey Lance. And we are going to have to try a field goal. All right. And we know we can drill it. Young Way Koo's got the range. This keeps us uh, at a one possession game if we're able to hit it. Here is the kick right down the middle. It's a one possession game. We have two timeouts. Accidentally calling a timeout would be the most Bengal loss of all time. If we end up really needing it. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm just, I'm just trying to put, fucking put down the controller and my I fucking fat finger to a the timeout button. Unreal. Anyway. Can't dwell on it. 147 to play. We got a quick score, but not quite quick enough to get that two-minute warning on our side. Here's a run left. We're all over it. Timeout. It's number one of two. Second and nine. Probably man coverage for the rest of the game. Here's a run. Right past Caden Ellis. That is our final timeout. So this clock's going to tick down all the way down to one minute or even under. Third down and five. They are going to throw the ball. We need to stop either way. And C.D. Lahim has dropped the football. That's our third timeout. That stops the clock. C.D. Lamb, so sure-handed, so good, has hurt us in this game, even though he hasn't been the number one threat. Dak trusts him on a big third down. He has a step on Okuda. 
who I guess impacts Lamb's ability to see the football. And he drops it with Jesse Bates bearing down on him. That could be a massive drop. As all we need to do is score a touchdown and kick the extra point to tie the game. We have a minute and 30 seconds to do it. Do not fumble, Cordero. It's the one thing I ask. Do not fumble. Decent enough return. 61 yards. A minute and a half to do it. And it's going to be Trey Lance. Playing hurt. Injured shoulder. Does he have enough to win the game? Madsen on the inside. Big catch by Neil Madsen. Trey Lance now over 350 yards passing. It takes some time off the clock though. Just over a minute to play. Pitts is open. Lance hits him. There's Kyle Pitts down the sideline. Diving. Knocked out of bounds at the nine. Kyle Pitts have a day scores the big touchdown to really get us back in it and now a big play to potentially set up another one wide open on the cross Lance hits him beautifully and Pitts turns up the field and gets a ton of extra yards stop showing Desmond Ritter in the huddle he is not our quarterback we could actually even run the ball in this spot it's exactly what we're going to do there's Bijan He's wrestled down after only a gain of about one. Clock's still ticking. We know about that. That's not an issue. This is our last set of downs. This is it. Second and goal from the eight. I'd like to get to a mesh. Instead, I'm just going to run the ball with Cordero Patterson. Blocks are good, but not good enough. It's third and goal now from the six. Back-to-back -back runs maybe didn't seem like the best choice there, but I really don't mind it. We need to hurry up, though. And we're going to roll out with Lance. Trey Lance looking for the end zone. He steps out at the one. What? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Trey Lance on the scramble. We tried to avoid Bijan, who just stopped. He just stopped right in front of him. Oh, I can't take it. My heart can't take it. If we go up the middle there, by the way and get tackled by Trayvon Diggs, who looks like he's about to shoot down, it's game over, right? So we had to run. Bijan essentially blocks Trey Lance out of bounds. And it's so subtle. But yes, the right foot does hit out of bounds. And that doesn't end up being the game-tying touchdown. It is fourth and goal on the one. Our season is on the line. Do we run the ball? Or do we keep the football in the hands of our best player, B. John Robinson? We are going to run the football. Fourth and goal from the one. If we don't get it, our season is over. Here's the play. Up the middle. B. John's into the end zone for the score. Tie game pending the extra point as we, is, as we have come all the way back. Oh my goodness. What a game this has turned out to be. What a game. Bijan gets just enough. And we're going to take the, the point after. Dallas is trying to ice us. It doesn't matter. I have the ability. You can't ice me, you dumb bitch, Mike McCarthy. For the tie. Here's the kick. It is up and good. 42-42. Momentum in favor of the Falcons. And Dallas will have nine seconds to try to get into field goal range. Now, that's a lot of time for the Cowboys. They have two timeouts. I need them to return this. We've already allowed a kickoff return touchdown in this game, but not on this play. Dallas will have one play to try to get into field goal range. And maybe not even that. Back up. They're going to run the ball and Tony Pollard shut down. Matt Prater is not going to get to the 37 because we are going to overtime. Tied up at 42. NFC Championship berth on the line. Man, this has been an even game. We've run a lot more plays, but about the same number of passing yards. Pretty close in terms of rushing yards. And the Cowboys have won the toss. So they'll get first crack at things. Now, 
A touchdown does not end the game. We do have a chance to answer in the playoffs. But this is uh whew. This is a spot you may not have even thought we could get to. Dak Prescott, critical crunch time, clutch time, interception, gave us a chance. Tied up at 42. Defense, I need to see something. Please run the ball. It's about the only thing we can stop. Throw over, and it's intercepted! Prescott hits Jeff Okuda, and Okuda might win the game for the Falcons. Dak Prescott throws another one. Perfect through three and a half quarters. He gets to the fourth and overtime, and he makes two critical mistakes targeting C.D. Lamb. And C.D. never even saw the football. A field goal would win us the game. Are we close enough? That's what this is going to come down to. Nobody's covering Kyle Pitts. Are they baiting it? We're going to see as Pitts takes a big shot. Let's just line it up for Young Way Koo. Field goal wins the game. Or better blocking does. There's Bijan. He makes a man miss. Bijan fighting into the end zone. Stopped at the one. Bijan Robinson has surely ended things here in Dallas. Arlington. And they're trying to bring out the vulture, Tyler Algier. We'll try to end it that way. Don't want to block kick. Don't want to miss it. Just want to go straight up the gut. Tyler Algier is in for the touchdown. Walk-off win in Arlington. The Falcons are headed to the NFC Championship. For the first time in this series, we are a game away from the Super Bowl. Last year, knocked out in the divisional to another NFC East team, the Philadelphia Eagles. This time, we take on the Cowboys, and with an improbable comeback win, we knock off the Cowboys in what could have been the game of the series. Trey Lance, he's not the backup anymore. He sends Dak packing, and we are moving on. Unbelievable. 388 passing yards, playing through pain. Two touchdowns, no picks. Rushing, Bijan sets us up. I think it was a 26-yarder who effectively ended. 70 yards and a touchdown. Algier, on his one attempt, gets the game winner. Where Daryl Patterson also had a touchdown. And receiving, we couldn't have done it without Bijan. 8 for 85 and a touchdown. Kyle Pitts, 5 for 139 and a score. Madsen goes over 100 as well. Oh my goodness. What a game. Pressure got there when it needed to. Big time interceptions were made when they had to be made. What an all-around team win. We have an upgrade for the power back. Tyler Algier going to be up to an 83 overall. It's awareness and trucking. Awareness does not a whole lot for us, but trucking is now 91. Jeff Okuda, man. Would we have won this game without him? I don't think so. We're going to upgrade slot on Okuda. That makes his primary scheme fit not man-to-man -man anymore. But we get plus two man coverage, so it still does. He's an 82 overall as a man corner, playing up to an 83. Matthew Bergeron finally getting an upgrade. Happens every once in a blue moon. I'd like him to be a better pass protector. He stays at a 74 overall for now, but gets a nice boost to pass block finesse. And I, I really can't believe we ended up winning that game. Now, the Niners, despite going only 8-9, are an 87 overall team with an 87 offense and an 89 overall defense. Special teams may be lacking a bit for them. They snuck into the playoffs, but they are getting home field advantage despite an 8-9 record. I guess they won the division. I don't know. I guess they would have had to, right? Well, they are going to be a better team in game than their record indicates. I'll see you in the NFC Championship. Thanks so much for watching. And the Deion Sanders Bowl is up next. And even though it just happened, Deion was also a Cowboy and a Raven and a Washington player. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.